this video will show you how can you use a TR84 white calculator to graph inequalities and find the feasible region. So I got my example question there, which is find the region that satisfies all of the following constraints. I will just name those inequalities to make it easier for me to explain. So this is my inequality one. This is my quality two, and this is my three, and this is my four. Okay. Now, in order to input all those inequalities into our calculator, we need to make sure that we only leave y's, sometimes x, and y here on the left hand side path, and we need to move everything else to the right. Okay. So let's do the first one together. First one, I got 5x minus 2y is less than or equal to 20. And as I need to move 5x to the right first, so left I got negative 2y, and right I got less than or equal to, and because it used to be a positive number, and when you move it to the right, it became negative. So negative 5x and plus 20, okay? Now we need to make sure that the co coefficient of y is equals to zero. So I need to let both the hand side part divided by negative two. So left I got two y, uh, negative two y divided by negative two. And when we are dividing or time sometimes uh, a negative number, we need to turn our sign into the opposite way. So because negative two is a negative number. So we turn the sign to the opposite, which is which used to be less than or equal to, now it's bigger than or equal to. Okay, don't forget equal to. And right, I got negative five x divided by negative two plus 20 divided by negative two. So we need to uh, give every number, every part divided by two. And we got y left on the left, y is bigger than, we cancel this negative sign, 5 on 2x, and this is divided by negative, so we, t we just put it here. So minus 10. Does that make sense? Okay. So I will write it down on the left. This is the in uh, inequality we're going to use. So second one I got, negative x plus 2y is uh, smaller than or equal to 8. Same thing, I need to move negative x to the right. So left I got 2y left, 2y is less than or equal to x plus 8. Okay, so now we need to um, give both hand side divided by 2, but y left, so y is less than or equal to half x plus 4. Okay, and now we copy that down here. And with 3 and 4, I don't need to worry about those because we don't need to change anything. So just copy that down. 3 equals x is bigger than or equal to 0 and y is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, cool. And because, because our calculator can only do shade in. So in order to do shade out in our calculator, because when we are doing shade in, it's going to be so messy. So what we want is shade out. So we need to tell our calculator, okay, we're shading out. What we need to do is we need to turn all the signs here, 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 here to the opposite way. We turn every sign here, every sign here to the opposite. Okay, to make things clear, I will name those um, inequalities. So this is y1, this is y2, this is y3. This is uh, just to make things clear. So later I can just directly put everything in calculator. So this is x1. Okay, so don't worry about this part if you don't like to do that. Okay, cool. So now we finally can turn our calculator on. So remember, these are the things we need to input here. And the first thing we need to do here is to cl click stats and then enter. So to check, do we have any existing list? If we do, we need to clear them. So we highlight list one, 
and we click clear list two there as well so i need to clear list two by clear and enter okay and when we're done this we need to click second and a y equal which is stat plot if you read the green thing up there so stat plot and to check do i have any stat plots turned on and i do i have two of them turned on and i need to turn off uh, all of those so i get in the first one i click enter and i need to turn it off so i choose off and I click enter that's it and then i need to go back to my stat plot to turn off uh, everything else so i go seconds and start plot again and see the first one is off so i need to turn off the second one so i enter and i choose off and i click enter and then i go second and y equal and now you can see everything is turned off don't worry about number five it doesn't really matter so just check one two and three all of them are off so we are good to go okay so by entering those inequalities we need to click apps which is that that one okay we we'll click apps and we need to find something called in equals in equals so which is that it's number six in my calculator it can be different in yours but it is called in equals okay so we enter when we oh, when highlight is six we click enter okay then we click enter again okay there we go first thing i need to do is to choose the right sign the right signs okay so for the first one i got the sign is less than or equal to i need to go left here by click there i go left and when i'm able to see a little rectangle surrounding my y1 i click enter okay now the color really doesn't matter so let's go down here click down and we need to pick the correct sign so for this one i got less than or equal to so i will need to choose less than or equal to which is that one okay when you make sure you choose the correct sign you just uh, choose okay and enter okay now we can see the sign is correct right and now we go right and we go right again and to highlight those blank space and we need to enter the inequality there so i have five on two by entering fractions i need to click alpha and f1 okay then i need to pick the first one that one there so enter and I got five on two, so five, go down on two, and go right. And X, which is alpha and X, you see the green thing up there? X, okay, and minus 10. Okay, and now we need to go down to deal with our another one. So it's the same, it's the same. We need to go left and go left. We need to see the rectangle is surrounding our Y2. And now we click enter okay so we go down here we need to choose the right sign so i the uh, in this specific case it is bigger than or equal to so that bigger than or equal to and then we click okay and we go right and right and i got one on two so i need to click alpha I need to choose y equal and pick the first one okay that's a fraction so one and down on two and go right okay x alpha x and plus four okay let's go down so now i need to do my y3 equals two which is there so just simply go left and left see the rectangle and the inter and down here choose the right sign which is less than or equal to which is that one and click ok okay just simply enter zero and we need to click enter as well enter okay there we, there we go 
And uh, yeah, we got x is less than or equal to zero as well. And as you can see, the x equals to is on the top left. Is that? So we need to go up, 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 and wait, up, and enter. Okay, we need to highlight x equals to and enter. So I have my x is less than or equal to zero. So go left, highlight x one by the rectangle, and enter and go down to pick a less than or equal to that one. So okay, and now I have zero, and enter. Is that okay? And now let's go back to my y. What happens to my Y1, I don't know, but I will click enter again to make sure. I'll click enter again to make sure. Okay, so now I'll click graph up there. It's a bit slow, but it looks all right. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, my graph size is okay and uh, the x range, the range of x axis is okay as well. But if you are not able to see any intersections where, where the required region is too small, you need to go to a window. So you click window and you need to reset your x maximum, x minimum, y minimum and y maximum to a reasonable reasonable range okay so mine is fine i'll go graph there now we need to find intersections which is there 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 those four corners by doing that we need to click second then trace then we need to choose inequality so we go right and we pick the first one, which is point of intersect trace. So we enter. Okay. As you can see in my calculator, it is automatic, automatically picked that point for me. So I'm going to name that A. So it is my intersection A, which is you are able to see those value, the value of the point down here. So it's x equals to 7 and y is 7.5. So 5 on 2 is 7. Wait. So 5 on two, uh, 15 on 2 is 7.5. So a is 7, comma, 7.5. I like to use decimals, but if you like to use fractions, that totally depends on you. And close the brackets. And up there, we are able to read it is the intersect, uh, intersection by y2 and y1. Okay, we copy that down as well. We say this is by y2 and y1. So this is for later. So we can later double check our answer. And I got intersection B. I go down here. Okay, that's my intersection B. So I read the value down there, which is 4 and 0. Okay, and this is by y3 and y1. y3 and y1. Okay, now let's go up. Let's go left. Okay, so then I got my intersection C. C is... 0 and 4, 0 and 4, and this is by y2 and x1, so y2 and x1, and I got my last one, which is 0, 0, there, okay, so copy everything down, and name it intersection D, so D is 0, 0, and this is by y3 and x1, okay, all good. Now we got all the information we need. We found all the intersection points and we got our graph right over there. So what we need to do is to copy everything exactly the same down on your paper. So in your test or when you're doing your homework, remember to use your ruler and your pencil. 
Okay, so what we need to do is first thing we need to label our x axis. So this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So as we can see over here, the biggest value of x is 7 there. So as long as you leave it enough space for uh, 7, it's fine. So I'll give it 10 units. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I usually just like to do that way. But if you like to label like each unit, it's fine as well. And for our y's, we can see the biggest value is 7.5 or others are less than that. So as long as you leave 7.5 units, or let's say 8 units out here, it's fine. So I will give it 10 as well and negative part as well. Just say this is my initial point. This is zero as well. Okay, now what we need to do is to plot all the intersections on here. So the first one I got is seven, seven and a half. So seven is there. And seven and a half is, this is five, six, seven, seven and a half is there. So the point is right here. This is my A, which is seven, seven and a half. Okay. And then I need to find B and C and D. So B is four zero, which is that. This is my B is four zero. And C is zero four. C zero four. And D is zero zero there. Even I got a number down here, I still need to label that in the graph because it is my intersection. D is zero, zero. Okay, cool. Now we need to link like every two points. Okay, so now we know the shading out part is on the right. So we shade this part out. Then I got to link those two, do those two points. So it's A and C. And from the calculator, we know the shading out part is on top, so we shade that part. Then we need to shade everything on the left, x is less than or equal to zero. So here, everything needs to shade out. And same thing, so all the y is less than or equal to zero, it needs to be shaded out. So now we can see it is very clear that our required region is nicely uh, narrowed in the middle. So we need to tell other people that this, this is our feasible region. Okay, now everything is done.